This is the Internet Report, where we uncover what's working and what's breaking on the internet and why. I'm Angelique Medina, and I'm joined by my co-host, Archana Kesavan. Hey, guys. So last week was kind of a quiet week, and so we thought we'd take the opportunity to answer uh, some of the more interesting questions that have come in. And um, so one came in through Twitter, one came in on our YouTube channel. And so we're just going to dive right in. So. Yeah. Taking the first one, I think that one was related to the level three outage that happened a couple of weeks back. And right. one of the things that we saw when we were looking at a few examples of how enterprises had been impacted was that one of the examples we looked at, um, this particular company only had uh, one active peer. So they did have two peers, but only one was active and the other one was passive. And so someone had posed like, how do I know whether or not um, my application that I rely on, a service that I rely on is just using a single provider, right? Because I want to know what my risk profile is and if something happens to their provider, they're going to go down. Yeah. So let's kind of maybe dive into some of the ways that you can figure that out. So there are a couple of ways you could do this, um, and and we'll take the example of this this provider or this service that we kind of you know went deeper um, as a part of the level three outage. It was um, go to meeting, go to meeting is yeah. owned by um, Log Me In. So um, if you go to bgpview.io, you have the option to either throw in their you know ASN number. So that can be the first place you could start. So let's go back and see what this throws up. So this is um, the ASN of the service that you're interested in. So finding out if they have, you know, um, how many upstream providers they have and, and what the appearing um, kind of ecosystem looks like. I think the cool thing about um, this, um, you know, this particular um, service, and, and this is a free service that we are looking at right now, is you can actually go down um, and investigate this, you know, from actually Based on the prefix. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So the exact prefix that we were looking at um, as a part of the outage two weeks ago was 68.64.14.0 slash 24. And then you click on routing, you can actually see these upstream providers um, in there. Um, and I think the cool thing, and this is as we're doing it today, right? Um, and we see two providers here, GTT and level three. And the interesting thing when we went back, and obviously you can use thousand eyes to you know understand this as well. And we went back and this is right at the time of the outage or actually right before the outage, you could see that um, this particular service that we were looking at has only one upstream or at least an active Yep. which is level three but as of today they have um two upstream providers level that's three right. and and gtt yep. and that's exactly why here in this site you're able to see you know two providers yeah so so bgp view one method to look it up there's like other methods that you know and other tools that can be used i think the nice thing that you can see here um, is that you get also that historical context. So you can see it kind of changes over time. You can understand like maybe how they reacted in response to an incident, you know, right. that there's, there's clearly some design right behind the scene right. uh, for this. And you can kind of chart that out. Um, so that's, exactly. a, that's a nice thing here. Um, that Especially if you are the actual provider of the service itself, and you know this view get that you go back in time, see how um, you know you are performing and how you your any recoveries that you put in place is also you know um, taking into effect. Um, but this was really cool. Um, they kind of learned from you know um, the yeah. unfortunate incident that happened a couple of weeks ago, and it's really nice to see that now they have two upstream um, peers in here. So um, yeah, that's actually well, and really cool. The, the other thing, too, is, you know, so certainly if you're the application provider, um, you can you can monitor yourself and you can kind of see when there are issues. But if you have a critical service and, you know, kind of this goes back to the question of like, how can you tell Well, you? Yes, you can use kind of this historical view. You can see that, but you can also alert on changes. Right. So if you suddenly see that there's um, it, or if there is like a new 
peer that's thrown into the mix, you can get an alert on that. You can check it out and see, okay, what's going on with my provider? What are they mm -hmm. doing? Are they, you know, did they lose a, a peer? Did they gain one? What's happening? So that's right. also a really nice kind of- Definitely, I think, yeah, that, that's totally fair. Um, I think the second question, I kind of also relates to, you know, this whole, like, how do you, who do you hold accountable? How do you kind of recover what, what happens once there's an outage? was around SLAs that we had, it was more in terms of, you know, um, what is the impact to um, SLAs? How are these penalty fields, uh, fees, you know, um, computed for different types of um, outages? And and really the question was who wins? Um, and I think- The answer is no one, no one wins. No one wins, <laughs> um, to be honest. Because like, even if you were able to, you know, um, prove to your provider that they did miss their SLAs um, or prove to your service provider, not saying just an ISP, any any service provider, right? Um, the uh, damage that is the outage might have caused really outweighs um, the penalty that, you know, you might even try to recover right. from. Right? Right. Yeah. So there's a lot of a lot of the the providers. So let's just take cloud providers. Um, you know, so so SLA um, contracts those can vary depending on who you are. Um, so you know, it's kind of hard to say like what what the outcome would be um, in some of these circumstances because they they could be very individual. The other thing is that a lot of services and they don't offer SLAs, you know, so so that's not even something necessarily available to you. And even to your point. Um, if you are able, if there is an SLA and you are able to prove them at, who was at fault, there, there's not a lot of teeth to them. They're not going to necessarily um, compensate you for the damage that's been done to your own service necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing to keep in mind, if we just use level three outage as an example, is that it had such a massive impact it, it, that it um, affected a lot of service providers and and a lot of enterprises. So if you relied on one of those service providers or an enterprise is service, um, even if you weren't Level Three's customer, like you have no recourse with Level Three, right? Um, right. Your digital delivery, um, you know, supply chain might have different, you know, providers. Who actually, do have different providers in the mix, but SLAs are. Um, still very siloed, um, you know, uh, metric. So every provider looks at, you know, their own like region of thoughts and from their lens and they're like, okay, well, my service was up and available. If you couldn't reach it, then that's not my problem. Right. So how yeah. do you really like, you know, impose an SLA there, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's where it's, it's good one to kind of think about it, not from the standpoint of, okay, what, you know, what can I recover, but like to be much more proactive about like, when you start to see issues how do you then go about like remediating it before you're impacted so so not really thinking about this from kind of like a, um a reactive kind of you know i'll right. just wait and then you know have my penalties um paid to me or um yeah so that becomes like a very um finger pointing exercise right this was your problem so this happened and i think like in this whole um interconnected web that we are a part of like that approach doesn't necessarily uh, work for the good of right. you know uh, the service or or the larger good right like you want to make sure that we're able to collaborate and get past the issue um rather than kind of you know um go down the path of you know i have an sla so i don't have to worry about this um type of approach yeah, yeah. And at the end, the end of the day like to you know to your point like we well you, you kind of have to understand like your whole ecosystem how it's all working and be very um uh kind of active in managing that because it's not really about like you know something that you can do directly it's, to your point it's about collaboration and it's about um you know it's kind of it's almost like governance, you know, you really managing your vendors well and their vendors is kind of how you're going to be able to ensure that you don't need, um, you know, to worry about things like SLAs. Sounds like utopia. <laughs> uh, so that was a bit of a uh, kind of quick run through a couple of the things that we thought were particularly interesting. I think that's probably about it for this yeah, week. Those we were really the couple see a whole of lot more. Um, that came over the last few weeks um, and yeah, it's been a quiet week, week which, is, which is great. Absolutely. All right. Well, that's our show. If you'd like 
um, if you well, if you do subscribe, and we recommend that you do, of course, you get a free T-shirt. So uh, all you have to do is send an email to the Internet Report, or uh, excuse me, to Internet Report <laughs> at thousandeyes.com. So no the, and uh, give us your address and your T-shirt size, and we'll get that right over to you. So all right. Until next time.